In Power Query, it's common to have nested tables. These are tables contained in the column of another table, where each row is a separate table in its own right. Sometimes we just want to expand the data and it's all good. But other times we might want to perform transformations on the data in that nested table before we expand it. So how can we achieve that? Well, that's what we're looking at in this video. How can we transform nested tables in Power Query? So if you're ready, let's get started. The example data that we're working with in this video is an Excel workbook. It contains four tabs. There's the January tab, the February tab, the March tab, and the April tab. And each of these are laid out exactly the same. They might have different numbers of rows and different records, but apart from that, the structure is the same. And we want to load this workbook into Power Query. So let me go ahead and do that and we'll see what this data looks like inside Power Query. So having loaded this workbook into Power Query, you can see that we have a row for each of our worksheet tabs. And if we click on the white space next to the word table, at the bottom, you can see a sample of the data that we have within each of our worksheets. So there's the January data, the February data, the March data, and the April data. Now we could, at this point, click the expand icon, and that would combine all of the worksheets together. However, these worksheets are not in a particularly clean state. We've got some null values, we want to promote headers, and let's say for our example, we also want to add an index column. So therefore, let's see how we can transform each of the tables within the data column before we expand that column. So if we want to apply some transformations to all of the tables within that column, let's start by making the transformations to just one table. Now we don't want to affect our original data just in case something goes wrong. So I'm going to right click on the query and then select duplicate. And just to keep things simple, I'm also going to rename this so that it's called duplicate. Okay, now I'm going to click on the word table so we can drill into that first worksheet. And this is what our data currently looks like. You can see that I have auto applied, change type and promoted headers. I don't want those applied at the moment, so I will delete both of those. And now let's clean up this data. To start with, I want to remove the top three rows. So there's the top three rows. From the home ribbon, I'll come to remove rows, remove top rows, and in the dialog box, I'll enter three, and then click OK. Next, we have the word total at the bottom, and we have the total for our value column. We don't want either of those, so I'll right click, go down to filters, and select does not equal. At this point, I can now promote the headers, so I'll go to transform, use first row as headers. Now, because of my settings, the changed type step has been automatically applied. So if you're working along, make sure you also change your data types. And then finally, let's say we just wanted to add an index column. So from the add column ribbon, I'll select index column, and let's start from one. Okay, so that's now got a nice layout for one of our nested tables. Next, we want to see how we can get the code so that we can reuse it. To get the code, all I'm going to do is from the view ribbon, I'll click on advanced editor. In here, we can see all of the code that makes up our query. So it starts with our source step and then our navigation step. That was us drilling into that individual table. The transformations that we applied to that table started with the removed top rows step. So therefore, what we want to do is take away all the steps that were before we drilled into our table. But before we do that, we need to take a careful note of this Jan 23 underscore sheet. That's also repeated here in the next step, which once we delete those steps is now in the first line of our query. And we'll deal with that in a few moments time. But what matters is that we start with our let statement, we have our in statement, and this contains all of the transformations that we made to our individual table. I'm going to press Control C to copy that, and then I'll click Done to close the advanced editor. You can see we have an error there, but we don't need to worry about that. 
Now we need to get the code that we copied and apply it to each table in our column. So I'll come back to our original query and this is the table or each of these tables is what we want to transform with the code that we copied. Now the key thing here is around syntax. Unfortunately, there are no transformations that we can make to our data column that gives us the right syntax. Instead, we're going to make the changes to the name column and then we're going to change that syntax. For the transform ribbon, I'll come across to extract and let's just select first characters. It almost doesn't matter provided it gives us the right transformation type. I'll set the count as one and then click OK. And what we want is this syntax here. We want the table transform columns. It then tells us the name of the previous step, what column we applied it to, the transformation that was applied to that column, and then the data type of the output. And it's this function here that we want to make our changes to. First of all, we don't want to make our changes to the name column. We want to change this so that the changes are applied to the data column. Next, the data type that we'll have at the end of this transformation is a table. So let's change that to table. Then after the word each, we have the transformation to be applied. We're going to press Control V to paste the code that we copied earlier. Now, as soon as we commit that, we will get an error. You'll notice the error is because we've referenced the Jan 23 sheet. This is the piece of code that we made a mental note of earlier. We now need to find every instance of that. So our Jan 23 underscore sheet, we can change that for an underscore. And now when we click away, you can see that our data is now in a good state. And also if we click and look at the data column, if we look at any one of those tables, you see that we have a nice tidy data set. If we compare that to what it was like before, this is how it was before. After we applied our transformations, we now have a nice clean data set, which means that when we expand here, we want to uncheck use original column name as prefix and then click OK. We now have a nice data set that we can use. Well, that's it. That's how we can transform a nested table in Power Query. Now I recommend you go back and you delete that duplicate query because we don't need that anymore and also make sure that your steps all have meaningful names. So we've seen in this video that the UI does not give us an easy way to transform a nested table. However, with a bit of knowledge and a bit of code stealing, we can achieve it without having to write any M code. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.